Uh, no, uh, I, I, I wish for uh, a Shrigma male. Uh, <laughs> oh, if you, can you can they you keep wear make, the, the, they keep the making males hat up. during the ceremony? I mean, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the the, the Shrigma male thing just wormed its way into my brain. <laughs> I I have like I've closed my eyes and seen that that uh fucking Wojak picture with the guy with the mushroom. It's it's a uh, it's not leaving. It'll never leave. It's like it's like one of those things. Remember like you know how like when you you're, when you die and you just see like a dozen random things. Like it's going to be one of those things for me. Yeah, it's going to be a real awful succession of things for me. I think uh, <laughs> the sh- the Shrigma the male. Uh, probably some anime thing. Yeah. Uh, that that time I like fell off my fr- the hood of my friend's moving car and he almost ran over my head. That's one of those things. You know, there's those things that just like pop into your head every once in a while. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. And, and it's that one pops in every once in a while, and I'm like, I could just be dead right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, just as I'm as I'm fading out into the abyss, just like me remembering as I like sat alone in my apartment drinking a two six of gin and watching a door fortress let's play. That's it. Life well lived. Hey folks, welcome to the Don't Tread on Weebs News Lab. Every two weeks when Chris and I record, we end up with more news content than we can reasonably fit in one episode. So if you're just looking for our hot takes on the news without any sorted anime content, the News Lab is here for you with the news and current events we cut out of the full podcast. So Chris, what do we have in the News Lab today? So uh, top of the pops here, Bill, how happy are you to go back to the office? I'm very happy uh, to go back to the office. I love it. I love it, actually. Um, it's good. What if it's, it's good, Bill? And, and I, I love I love the interactions I have with the people there. Uh, I love the dynamic experience of being in a workplace and feeding off of other people's energy. Uh, uh, that's not at all uh, what happened today. I sat <laughs> in uh, in my office. Uh, I have I have my own office um, now. Uh, I've I've reached that stage in my career. Damn, um, what's that like? And I just sat in it, but like I only got it recently, and so it's like unfurnished. There's like a conference room table in there, and like there's nothing on the walls. Like um, a sleeping, so ba- an sat- unrolled sleeping bag on the floor, <laughs> a fucking trash can fire. <laughs> uh, I just sat in this fucking small box for eight hours, waiting for someone who was two floors above me to come see me for fifteen fucking minutes, and she never fucking did. Never and did. That is the awesome. only only reason I went to the office today, and I waited for eight hours. And so everything else I did all day, I could have absolutely done from home. Uh, and it just. I told you that I wanted to talk about the return to work stuff like two days ago before this happened. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after that experience, I'm like, yeah, actually, no one should ever go to the office again because fuck, fuck people. They're awful. Fuck the office. Fuck other people. Fuck your coworkers. Like, I like my coworkers, but at the same time, yo, fuck coworkers. Uh, Like, hey, Bill, here's here's the counter argument to this, though. All right. Let's let's put our let's put our hustle, uh, our hustle culture mindset hats back on. for Sorry, I I just dropped a copy of Mortal Kombat for the Sega Genesis. This happens. You've got like probably a dozen of them. I understand. All right. (laughs) Bill, come come with me for a second and put back on your hustle hat. All right. Yes. All right. Hustle hustle hat on hustle mode engaged. It's 4 a.m. Ready to go. Yeah. By showing up to the office, you got important, you know, like soft skills in there. You showed your face. You proved that, you know what, like you're you're rip roaring, raring to go to, you know, come back to the new normal and and and, you know, get your sleeves dirty and work and show that your manager that you're you know, you're there, your butts in seats. Uh, all these other things that I've been reading from articles trying to argue why you need to go back to work. You know, you were doing those things, Bill. You were hustling at your job. I don't. I don't need any more help with that. I, I I made it to the like IT management level of things because it's hard to find IT managers because very few IT people <laughs> actually have the soft skills required to be a manager. They keep drinking uh, themselves to death or shooting their brains out. How'd this happen? Yeah, 
and and my primary skill is fucking shaking hands and kissing babies. So like I'm fucking <laughs> I'm, I'm great at this, and and I don't need any any more help at at like attending meetings and at, like m- making sure that I never actually contribute anything, but people are happy I'm there. Uh, like that's I'm already good at that. I don't need any more help. Um, but uh, anyway, my my anger aside about my completely wasted trip to the office today. Um, I've been working from home since January of 2019. Uh, I was, I, I, I was with one company in San Francisco. They let me go remote. Uh, I, so I moved back up to Washington, uh, and I worked there for five months and then I got, uh, another job that was the, the job was fully remote as well. Uh, and I worked there for about a year and a half, um, until last fall. And then I got another job with a company that's actually local here, in Clark County, um, but of course it was COVID, so it was remote as yeah. well. Uh, but now we're approaching the phase where, like, they're going to have to have people start coming back into the office. Are they go like? Um, here, here's here's my question to that: Is like, are they gonna force you to come back? Is that because like I wanna I wanna discuss like because my job like I started in the office when I started my job back in like end of 2019 pre went went work from home when everyone else did back in March last year and just kind of been work from home since and like I'm. You you can't force me to leave at this point. I like I, I might do the thing where like once every two weeks I'll come into the office to like say hi to people and like I don't know steal some soda from the fridge. But like I'm not I'm not going back full office. You can't fucking oh, make I, me. I, had I like, will not. I had like four Coke Zeros today at the office. Yeah. Uh, and like you know played with the Papa shot in our in our commons area. Like <laughs> just like wandering around this mostly empty building, just like. Why am I here? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> like I could be doing time theft at home where no one will see me. <laughs> yeah, there's less chance of getting um, caught. Um like are you going to have to go full-time office? Uh probably not. Um so my my specific division of the very large company that I work for that I will not name um uh is uh, very separated from our uh like corporate entity um both geographically and kind of like culturally. metaphorically yeah um and so we will probably return in a hybrid capacity um and since i i work in it uh there will be people who want not only want to return to the office but there will be people who have to return to the office and so that will necessitate me to be around in some amount right but it seems likely that for me uh myself and my team will basically just like rotate right like you know uh, there's two of us now, there'll be three of us soon, and it'll probably just be, like, the junior guy is there every day, uh, and then, like, me and the middle guy are there, like, you know, two to three days a week or something like that, just, like, rotating through. Yeah. Um, that, that seems like how things will go for us. Uh, other departments will probably manage it differently, but when I think about, like, the software development side of things, uh, I just why? don't... Yeah. I don't see why. Uh, it, it doesn't... It, it, I'm, and I'm not particularly like jealous of them or anything but like i don't i don't understand what benefit they have from returning to the office uh and i I suspect that is the case for an awful lot of people working in the technology world where like nothing has changed about like the way their business has operated since uh covid started you know profits have probably gone up i know for my company like last year was our most profitable year ever yeah. Um, and nobody was at the office. So like uh, what I'm the reason I wanted to propose this topic is that I've been saying since this began, I don't know how companies are going to put the genie back in the bottle. Um, because for years, the argument against full time remote work was, oh, people will be less productive. There won't be enough oversight. Like, uh, you know, people will be interviewing for other jobs undercover and like, it'll be much easier for them. So it'll hurt employee retention. It's going to hurt relationships between departments. Like all there's been all these arguments for why you can't do it, but we just had to do it for a year and a half forcibly. And for a lot of companies, nothing changed. Yeah. Like none of that really showed up. Um, yeah, it's and so yeah. So my my question is like, what's gonna fucking happen? Because the I can tell you what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, the the corporate side of things, you know, I've seen two big companies, Morgan Stanley and Bank of America, 
both said over the last week, everybody better be back at their fucking desks by yeah, Labor Day. It's it's a common recurrence in finance, actually. A lot of the research I was doing before this showed that like finance fucks uh who's the who's the CEO right now? Goldman Sachs, like Philip Solomon or uh David Solomon. Literally like, just the fucking guy from Monopoly. Like, yeah, I, like he he looks like a fucking thumb wearing a monocle. Um, he basically said like the work from home trend in finance was an aberration that will quickly be corrected. Like like they're the finance folks fucking hate work from home and like pretty much anyone I think that's like in an office culture that is not necessarily technological is like kind of having the same response on the corporate level. And oh, you I, mean people who don't produce anything? Yeah. Uh. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how that works. Like when your whole job is like attending meetings and doing yeah. cocaine. Like, if you're if you're a middle manager, this all must just be fucking terrifying to you because you're really realizing your own like uselessness. And this is why, like, as as a manager, uh, this is why I have said for years, I do not support IT managers who are just people managers. Like, if you if you don't get your hands dirty, you are just like asking to make yourself obsolete. Yeah. Uh, because at some point, like, people are going to realize we're spending all of this money on someone who just, like, you know, puts rubber stamps on the decisions of others. Yeah. Tells people, good job, and attaboy, and puts gold stars on things. Yeah. That's, yeah. my company and does so, the same like, thing. Like, all our, all our PMs and, and, and development managers need to have, like, some technical jobs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, but that's not the case in, like, finance and stuff, right? Where you just, you have, like, you know, a, a, a departmental manager who all they do is people manage, right? And those people are dying for people to go back to the office because it is very hard to prove, especially in like a commissions based role where like there is a realistic incentive for people to actually work hard uh, other than their salary. Right. Like it's very hard for you to prove that you're doing anything if like everyone is still producing at the same levels they were and like you aren't seeing any of these people ever. Yeah. You're being proven that you're useless. Um. I think I think there's a number of other reasons why like um we're hearing this this like go back to go back to the office thing and like one of the things I've been seeing a fair bit of is a lot of opinion pieces and op-eds are coming out essentially stating like you know it's better for your career to go back to the office. I've done a bit of digging like I don't have the details in front of me right now cuz I didn't write notes but like um like uh was like property managers <laughs> people that yeah people that you know like buy like buy sell rent out lease office space um they really want people to go back to the office they really want people to see the value of going back to the office full time oh yeah i mean i i'm very curious about what's going to happen in san francisco especially like N new york i'm not as interested in because it, it has like a variety of different industries uh, you know, media, technology, finance, etc. Right, uh, are pretty concentrated in New York. Uh, fashion, you know. Yeah. Um, but like San Francisco is so heavily technology based, and like the tech companies are seem to be the people who are just like, well, nothing fucking changed. Uh, why are we paying millions of dollars for this office? Yeah, I think um, I think my company is having that exact thought right now. Is because like they just like leased out like a bunch of new uh, uh of like office space like a month before this all fucking happened. Yeah, P Pinterest was the first big example I saw back in like the summer of last year, where uh, Pinterest had just leased a, a huge office space in um, Soma in in uh, San Francisco. Uh, Soma is kind of a shitty shitty part of town. Uh, it's where I used to work, um, uh, and it, it used to be like the leather district. Um, cool. And so, like you know, Pinterest opening an office there is very much like a gentrification thing um, by way of business. Uh, but like, um, Pinterest gave up their lease. They just like paid, they were like paid the fucking, you know, contract severance price to get out of this like 10 year lease, uh, because they were like, this is fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, we can just this, do this. this fine. What if we just you do know, this? We, we can just let everybody stay at home in perpetuity and like not have this office anymore. And it's actually like financially beneficial to us, even with the severance fee yeah uh for our contract and like that that was pretty early that was in like july or something of last year and now you've got a whole a whole extra year of data for these companies to look at and be like well why have we erected these you know massive playgrounds for adults that cost us shitloads of money with like catering and fucking hvac and like lighting and janitorial staff and like all of these things Nap that you rooms, have to do to ball yeah. pit all the stupid shit that you have at a tech company yeah. that just Showers, actually infuriates me fucking gyms yeah uh, like you know my my fiance previously worked at a company that had like a gym at the office yep yeah, same um 
And it's like, why are you doing all of this if it doesn't actually appear to have any effect on the effectiveness of your company because you've done just as well when people had no access to any of this stuff? Um, and so from like from the tech side of things where they get all of these toys, I can see them being like, no, we don't want to do this anymore. Uh, but from the more traditional corporate side of things, people are like, uh, no, like we actually own this building because we've been in business for 100 years. Um, and we're not gonna, like, have this fucking asset on our books that is vacant, uh, and we're not gonna have our middle managers, like, not be able to do oversight on people, um, and, you know, they're going to be trying to force people back into the office, uh, and there's also this question of, um, employee mobility, right? Like, the more companies fall in line with remote work as a, as a default, the harder it's going to be uh, for companies in high cost areas to retain employees. Um, yeah, because the the thought to this becomes like, I I imagine there are again land developers like specifically in high high expense places like fucking San Francisco that are probably shitting bricks about this because like if you are someone who is making an obscene amount of money working in the tech industry and can afford the housing prices in San Francisco, you can just pull up, pull up stakes and I don't know, go buy like a, a detached house somewhere in like Ohio for like a fraction of the cost and still work remotely just fine. Like, yeah. And even, even if you take a pay cut, right? Like, yeah. which is also, which that's fucked up. Cause a lot, I know like a lot of tech companies like Facebook are basically saying like, if you decide to leave the state or whatever, like you're going to get paid less for it, which is, I like, I, th I think that it's initially fucked up, but I think that it balances over time uh, because I, I think that, you know, the first wave of people who make that move where they're like, I'm moving to fucking Nebraska, bye. They're going to be like, all right, well, we're going to pay you Nebraska money. Um, they'll probably still pay them a bit more, right? Like they're not going to be like the media, you know, you're a software developer or whatever. You're a fucking, you know, a data engineer or something. And like, you're like, I'm moving to Nebraska, bye. They're not going to, like, look at what people make in Nebraska and be like, all right, well, we're lowering your salary from $150,000 a year to $35,000 a year. <laughs> like, that's that's not what's going to happen. They're going to be like, all right, well, you know, the most we can offer you if you're going to be in that place is 80 or something like that, right? And so now you've got this person who moves to Nebraska who is now making fucking twice the median wage. Um, and that's going to, in turn, drive up prices in those regions. Hell yeah, taking gentrification worldwide, baby. Yeah, uh, so it's not necessarily a good thing, right? But I, I think that, like, as the second and third wave of this come, companies that are local to those areas will have to start paying higher wages because of the competition, right? Um, and, you know, so I, I think that, yeah, like, initially wages will go down for people who are leaving, but that will drive wages up elsewhere, right? You won't see this massive wage disparity like you currently see where it's like, oh, uh, you're, an, uh, you're a system administrator. You're a system administrator in San Francisco. You make six figures out the gate. You're a system administrator in Ohio. You make $45,000. Like that's an enormous disparity that exists currently. Um, and I, I think that that will contract in on itself as, as this uh, starts to take hold. Um but yeah, you're right. Like the the big question is like if the work you're doing hasn't changed, if the labor you're producing hasn't changed, why exactly are you worth less money now? Yeah, there there becomes some does, very Does that does that indicate that these companies were paying you essentially a like uh, you know, fucking stay here or else fee? Yeah, there's a lot of questions that come with this that like I I I'm not well suited to answer. It just like it seems fucked, right? Like well, they can't attract talent because uh, you know, if you if you're a company in San Francisco and you're like we're, we're we'll pay you $60,000, no one will fucking work for you because they could work the exact same job somewhere else in San Francisco for fucking one and a half or twice that. Um and the I I think what this ultimately all traces back to is real estate speculation. <laughs> Right, like a little bit, yeah. The, the the labor hasn't changed. Uh, the only thing that's that's different about those locations: your San Francisco's, Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, uh, New York. Well, Vancouver's a weird that's... aberration where like our our housing prices are fucking crazy, but we get paid like nowhere. Like our our tech industry is, we get decently compensated, but it's not like it is in the states. Yeah, but also your housing industry is fucked because of real estate speculation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, but I think that's I think that's a newer phenomenon for you guys than it is here. 
Um, and so I think here it's it's been like decades in the making. So like wages have slowly, you know, increased with it. Uh, whereas you guys haven't had the time to catch up. Um, but like all these cities that are crazy expensive, real estate is crazy expensive and real estate is crazy expensive because of speculation. Um, and that is why these companies have to pay so much money. They're essentially paying a premium to get people local to them uh, because they have to. Otherwise, people can't live there. Uh, and so it's really just like the real estate holders, the landlords that have driven up these wages and are now putting these companies in a hard position where everyone is saying like, well, I don't want to fucking live here anymore because clearly I can do my job from somewhere else. And then these companies are like, oh, but we're paying you money. We're paying you, to we're paying live you San here. Francisco money. And now you're going to move to to Dayton, Ohio. Like, fuck. And then all the Airbnb owners are also shitting bricks and losing their heads. That was not to change the subject too harsh and too fast, but that was my favorite little bit that came out like last year around like May, where it's just like, I'm an Airbnb owner. I like, I like, I rent, I rent 35 houses <laughs> in Airbnb, the mall, and now I'm fucked and now I'm fucked forever. And I just thought, good. I, I love yeah, that you're I, fucked forever. The one that I saw where someone was like, I have 10 mortgages. <laughs> I can't pay any of them. And it's like, what, what are you, bank what are you, did you go to? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> what, what fucking bank was like, yeah, you're mortgaged eight times. Let's put another two on the deck. Let's see it. <laughs> well, you're paying all time your mortgages. Uh, it seems to be working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens when, like, I don't know, the next 2008 happens and, like, motherfucker defaults on a dozen mortgages at once? <laughs> uh, I, like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. At that point, it's just like, these houses are free? Did, like, <laughs> did we learn nothing from the past 20 years? I, it feels like we didn't. It really feels like we've learned fucking nothing. Yeah, anyway, I, we're, we're getting a little we're getting a little into the weeds here, but I, I what I'm what I'm getting at is that like I, I think there's just like a whole spin out effect from this, like uh, the fact that everyone's been working remotely, not everyone, obviously, but the fact that like uh, desk workers have been working remotely yeah. for the last year and a half. White collar assholes like you and me. Yeah, it, like there's a whole just like spin out effect of this where um, it, it touches like all these various parts of the economy, um, housing, transportation, uh, like short term stuff like hotels, uh, Airbnb, like um, it'll touch high end restaurants that are primarily concentrated in large cities uh, because if people are Corporate like, oh, I'm going to work, I'm going to work. Well, no, I mean, the people aren't going out to lunch, but like if if companies decide to allow people to work remotely and all these workers at fucking Google and Apple and shit are like, well, I'm leaving the Bay forever. Right. Like how are people, how are these restaurants going to be charging so much fucking money anymore when all those tech workers leave the area? Yeah. Right. Like uh, this, this whole kind of uh, premium economy has been built around high cost of living. And, uh, it's been built around this myth that people are getting something out of that high cost of living. You're getting access to like the nicest properties and the, the best restaurants and like all this kind of thing. But in reality, most people seem to prefer just like having like a quiet place to live. Yeah, like, it's um, the entire myth of San Francisco and New York has been built on this idea where like, yeah, you have to pay through the nose, but like the best people work here. It has the best amenities. But like, it seems like I'm not saying that's not necessarily true. It's more just like people don't necessarily fucking care about that. Like, yeah, I mean, like I, I used to I used to have to go to New York for work all the time um, and, and I love it there. It's great. But like, I don't I don't know that like at my current age, I would want to live in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not going to try to start like a, a, a podcast. Well, we already did, but we're not going to try to make it big in podcasting by moving to New York and becoming a shithead. Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, it, it's it, it's not appealing to the, the millennials that are now grown up, right? Who are the people who primarily staff these industries of white collar technology workers primarily, um, who are now like in their, you know, mid to late 30s uh, and are just like, well, no, I, I'm trying to start a family. So like, hey, Google, uh, can, can I just go somewhere where I can afford to buy a house and keep my job. Uh, and for Google, it's like, yeah, just fucking do it. Like, what's the downside of it, right? But that creates a problem for all these industries that are not open to this, where suddenly all of these other large companies are like, yeah, just work from anywhere. 
All right, so now you work in fucking Chicago or whatever, um, and now all of these companies all over the country have opened up job recs to anybody, right? So you're, you know, you've got your family in Chicago or whatever, and like, or you're, you know, you're taking care of your elderly mom or something like that, and so you're like, well, I can't move for work, I have to stay here, so I'm kind of chained to my job. But now there's like a perfect job fit for you on the other side of the country that wasn't previously available to you. Yeah. And your company is saying you have to come into the office every day. Meanwhile, this better job on the other side of the country is saying, I don't give a shit where you work from. Just do whatever. Yeah. How are these companies that refuse to let people work remotely going to compete with that? Well, we're seeing this already. Like there are like granted there are apocryphal reports, but like you're seeing reports of like uh, surveys are saying like 30% of, of like high skilled workers will fucking quit if they're forced to come back to the office. There was like a, yeah. a, a some th- stuff I was seeing online where it says like, yeah, my, my game studio basically just like lost like 9% of its employees because like they tried to force everyone to go back to work and a bunch of people just mass quit. Like you, if, if people are, I don't know, trying to enforce this weird shit, like it's not going to fly for people that have gotten used to this and would actually generally prefer it. You can, yeah, you, can write, I, you can write every article you want about how, like, you're missing the soft skills and how, like, to advance your career, you need to show your face at the office. Like, people don't buy this shit. There, a lot of people are trying very hard to make this, like, a narrative that, like, to advance your career, you need to be face in the office. Smart people aren't buying it. No, pe- people don't buy it, and I will tell you exactly why they don't buy it. Um, I'm, I, I'm in my mid-30s or, or, you know, late, early 30s, whatever, like... Uh, Quarter 30s. <laughs> quarter 30s um and uh i've been working in um i've been working in the software industry now since 2015 um i have roughly 10 years of like it experience uh across various industries healthcare education software um and the only thing that has ever advanced my career is quitting and getting a new job um, that's the only thing that's ever done it. I've, I've been promoted internally before, but it's only ever like a promotion in name and salary. It's yeah. never like an actual change in responsibility. Really? The only thing that's ever changed, like the like level of my career is quitting and getting a new job. That's common, uh, which is why, which is why like, you know, career, career consultants encourage you to not stay anywhere for longer than two years. Um, and so this idea that like, in order to advance your career, you need to be in the office is, is untrue because (laughs) clearly what's true is in order to advance your career, you need to leave the office you're currently in and go work in someone else's office. Yeah. Go work remotely somewhere else for another year and a half and then bop and do it again somewhere else. Yeah. And so like, it's all a farce designed to keep the status quo of how employment works intact. Um, and the problem is, is that not everyone is buying it. Uh, especially I think small technology companies that don't have huge investments in real estate or who have burdensome investments in real estate. They're going to be like, fuck it. No, we're remote. Like we're remote first. Like maybe we'll rent like some small office space for the people who hate their children. Uh, or something and and need to like go be in an office in order to get anything done but like everyone else work remotely we don't care that's going to be a huge problem for the companies that refuse to adapt um, as they try to compete in that marketplace yeah and it's interesting when you start looking at other industries as well like we already made a note that that finance seems to be notoriously against this idea but someone will kind of buck the trend and already we've we've proven that like the last year and a half has shown that like people people will do this and things will work just fine if not better so it's I, yeah i i saw the morgan stanley thing yesterday where this guy was like if you're able to go out to eat in new york city i better see you back at your desk in in september um and i i saw that and i was like look if i was another if i was a competitor to morgan stanley right now i would just say like okay we're going to do remote and yeah. then just poach every employee at Morgan Stanley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I imagine there are people that will want to stay remote that just would love to work somewhere else if they have if they if they can't. Yeah. Or, yeah. or just make that just make that a condition of employment, right? Like, just be like, we're not fully remote, but like, hey, I see you work at Morgan Stanley. I see you've been working remote for a year and a half. Uh, if you come work for fucking J.P. Morgan or whatever, um, we'll let you work for we'll let you work remotely. Yeah. Like you can just you can just keep doing that and we'll we'll call it a we'll call it a prototype model internally so no one gets uh, no one gets upset. And you can just start stealing employees from these fucking com- these competitors that refuse to adapt. It's like you're just you're just showing your own ass. Um 
let me talk about one more thing I've got on this because this was something that I, I I came across while I was doing my my research here. Um, uh, let's try to let's try to discuss ways to punish people that want to work from uh, remotely, because because uh, I I read this fucking report from uh, from Deutsche Bank economists that admittedly this came out like late last year, but there uh, a bunch of economists were just like, well, what happens uh, if people are working from home? Like, what are some things that should change because of this? And the uh, the response from Deutsche Bank basically said, oh, if people are working from home, they should pay more in taxes. If uh, if people are working from home, they should be paid less. They should be charged, in fact, from their company some sort of like leasing office fee. <laughs> um, just just a lot of surprisingly fucked up shit for like how do we punish people who want to work from home? Why exactly should you pay more in taxes? Like I don't I, well, I don't because because you're, you're not paying money into your commute. You're not going out for your for those lunches that you would get around like the Chipotle near your office. Like that place is going to go under now. You need to pay more. I don't know how tax money helps those people. Like it doesn't actually explain that part at all. But okay, but uh, and and I know this uh, from someone close to the source. Uh, but uh, major home improvement retailers. Um, actually did quite well last year uh and the reason they did quite well is because everyone was at home yeah uh, appliances also sold in record numbers last year um like people did you know like massive improvements on their houses uh gym equipment like home exercise gym equipment, equipment became sold. fucked up i was tr- tr- cat and i trying to buy weights just for our apartment became a nightmare for a little while <laughs> Uh, furniture sales, um, and so it's like uh, these things, you know, transition into different parts of the economy. Like the money doesn't just get hoarded, right? So like it is purely a punishment thing when they're like, you should pay taxes because you're not going to fucking Chipotle for lunch anymore. It's like okay, yeah, but you you bought a fucking nicer couch because you're spending more time at home, mm-hmm. right? Like the money the money didn't just evaporate out of the economy; it just transitioned into a different sector of the economy. Yeah, and I and I bet for like for every like lunch uh, lunch opportunity that Chipotle lost, they probably made it back in in motherfuckers door dashing. Which I don't know how restaurants feel about door dash, but like those fucking companies are probably making out like fucking bandits since the pandemic. I. I think chain restaurants are generally okay with it. Um, mom and pops are not, to my knowledge. Uh, so, like, I, I guess it varies, like, how they feel about these things. But I, I think that, like, um, it's very bad for, like, sit-down restaurants. Yeah. Uh, because they have tipped workers um, who, as we've talked about in the past, like, that's a lot of their income. So it's awful for them. Like, do not use delivery services to order food from sit-down restaurants. Uh, that like, if you're going to use DoorDash to fucking order McDonald's because you're a scumbag, like, I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's going through the drive through. You could go through the drive through too. like you're paying for the like to not have to put pants on. Right. Like, uh, great. Do whatever you want. But like, don't order from like a fucking Italian restaurant. (laughs) Um, but yeah, like the. It, the the money just changes sectors of the economy. Yeah, it, like money does, doesn't money doesn't disappear. People still want to spend money to do things. So if it's not going yeah. into A, it's going into B instead. Like so long so long as you're not just giving money to like the extremely wealthy who do just hoard it. Like this stuff eventually finds its way back into the economy. Oh yeah, and it's funny. It's funny to see people recommending that people pay more in taxes when it's the average worker that would have to pay more in taxes and not rich people, right? Like, yeah, shockingly <laughs> enough. Yeah, uh, Jeff Bezos works from home probably every day. Uh, why don't we tax him some more? Listen, uh, like we're gonna have a special episode when him and his brother die in that fucking rocket, and that's all I'm really thinking about uh, right now. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, fucking <laughs> pray. Uh, yeah, prayers up for um, the rocket. Prayers up for those uh, O rings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just hope they were installed by some overworked Amazon employee. Um. <laughs> who was pissing in bottles and got like a little bit of piss between the ring. Um, It's just not sealed anymore. Uh, But uh, one last thing on the work from home thing that, that I I was thinking about is that um, my, my fiance recently got a new job, um, which is a better job than the one she had. Nice. Um, But it is not remote. Um, Less nice. So she, she has to commute to work um, in Portland. And so she has like a 20 to 30 minute commute every morning. Uh, She also has to like get out of bed and like make herself presentable and like, you know, prepare lunch and like do all of these things that she wasn't doing for the last year and a half. Right. 
Um, and, uh, she has been in the interview process with another company, um, that will let her remote work remote. Right. Um, and it is, it has quickly become a no brainer of which one she prefers. Yeah. Right. And I think that the like, uh, personal health benefits of working from home, um, are not well recognized, um, like, I, I just don't think people realize how much sleep they're losing uh, having to go to work every day versus working from home. Um, how much more control they have over, like, what they eat in a given day. Um, you know, how much less stressed out they are. Uh, how much money they're not wasting on, like, clothing and, like, laundry detergent. Like, all of these, like, weird knock-on benefits that are, like mostly like personal health related mm -hmm. uh that working from home has actually given to people uh like how many how many people are like exercising now because they work from home and they have all this like extra energy because they don't have a you know an hour of commuting yeah, in they their have day. they have the time like all of a sudden yeah. like people have been given an extra hour and a half two hours of their life back every day like that's the biggest reason why i don't want to go back to the office is because my commute was like an hour both ways like I yeah don't... i mean when when i when i worked in the bay area um my door to door was an hour um and so like i had two hours of commute every day uh, no problem. And yeah. like that amount of time when I started working remote, um, after I left the Bay area and I started working remote exclusively, uh, I, I, I didn't really know what to do with myself. Like I got more sleep, um, uh, <laughs> and I had more free time and I just wasn't generally like, I didn't do the thing, uh, that you do when you work in an office where you get home from work and you just like sit down on your couch, like with your shoes on fully clothed for like 30 and, minutes. Like, it's like not even like the TV's on, but you're not even looking at it. <laughs> like with your fucking bag, just like on you still. And you're just like, Oh God, <laughs> I, I don't even want to get up to get a beer. Um, like you, you shouldn't be that exhausted from fucking like sitting on a train and then sitting at a desk all day, but people are, and it says something about the like mental and physical health aspects of having to go into a fucking office every day. Uh, and I've been working remote for two years, uh, two and a half years now, and I don't feel that way anymore. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that has really changed is like, I don't fucking get up and sit on a train for an hour every day. Uh, and like crowded with people and then go to an office where everyone is yelling and then like sit on a fucking train for an hour again and then like get into my fucking house and just want to fucking die right like it's it doesn't happen it is amazing um, what like giving someone a few hours of their day back will just like do for mental and physical well-being absolutely yeah. yeah and so you know i think that the push to continue working from home is a noble one uh, and I think that any company out there where there's a consider, if there's enough people in your workforce that are like, you know, we really want to just keep working from home, but it's clear that our bosses don't, um, it, it is, you can organize in a way that is not unionization and you can organize, you know, send an open letter to your, your C-level executives saying like this many people have co-signed this saying that like having to go back to the office full time is going to create a retention problem um and you're not threatening directly that you're going to quit but you're saying that like people in your company <laughs> are going to Yo, people gonna fucking dip you try to do this yeah people are gonna start looking elsewhere if you try to bring things back to the way they were and maybe you won't win full remote but you might win hybrid and if you uh, were going to be hybrid some people might win full remote right and, um, and so, you know, you should really push for it if your company is in that place. And, you know, like tap your nose, like in the process of, you know, meeting your coworkers, getting all this discussion done, you know, like organizing together to win this one thing, like who's to say you don't, you know, start keeping those lines of communication open and saying, you know, that works surprisingly well. What if we try to get better health care? You know, like what if, what if we started a union perhaps? Like it's a, yeah. it's a, call it a, call it like a, a gateway towards a, a beautiful world for labor. Thanks, everybody. This has been a report from the Don't Tread on Weebs News Lab, your number one source for brain poisoning. Please tune in to our full podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever podcasts are held. If you want to reach out to us, you can get us at Don't Tread Pod on Twitter or Don't Tread on Weebs at gmail.com.
States. 